Hi folks, time for some more Ortiz, I thought. So this is Ricciacada Cuarta, and I'm playing from a version that's been transposed for the tenor. It feels a while since we put out um, something for the tenor department to play. As ever, there is a link to it under the video. There's a few places where, if I remember, I'll try and point them out. I've changed, made a few B flats into B naturals. Generally, in places where I've recorded you a version of the ground to play along with, um, and they come at points where there's a G major chord and the B flat sounds just a little bit too interesting for my taste. So you'll find a few um, as we go through. First position for starters. Let's put the D on the four, holding down the one on the first G, and let's start on the back row. on a tenor isn't it you never get down there actually onto the bottom string so I am basically in first position fingering wise such a lot of times. So that's bar four. I've got a fourth finger on that D, but I want the B flat as well. So thinking my thumb is opposite my second finger. So I've got my hand in first position shape, if you like, but reaching back for the flats. Down here though, second finger on the bottom note jolly long way to get to the top F. So that note needs all the help it can get to, to kind of resonate. Partly, oh that was a good twang wasn't it from down there. It needs all the help it can get because it's low on this file, it's gut strings, so it takes a while for it to speak. If you take your left hand finger off it, the sound will stop as soon as you lose that, that finger. So hold it on and then use your three for the F at the top. So by, by doing that, we've ended up in half position, haven't we? We're now bar six, third finger on that F, we're in half position, and that's fine. I would move here purely because I like being in first position. It would fit with it in half, so that'd be natural with a four. It's fine, stay there if you like. I just, I have a habit of moving back into first position at the first available opportunity. So, bowing works out really nicely, I think, if you start on a back. Shall we play it together from the top? After two. One, two. you have to bow it as though you're handing that note on to somebody sitting on your right and you're going to give them your bow just as you run out you're going to pass it over and with a bit of luck somebody else will pass you a bow from your left I think that's the feeling of that when it goes sailing on into the rest there's a few notes in here where we need to properly properly connect with the string and a few notes that I think we can get rid of so the first two, that very, that very first one is an upbeat. I am connected to the string, but not significantly. I've got, I'm using the middle finger on the, on the bow hair to, to get it started. I'm not working too hard on that. Whereas this one, I'm really connected to the string with my middle finger. is a nothing. I considered putting it on fourth finger but then I wanted the open string for that one and I just find it a bit fussy to do that. So I went for an open string for both and um, see what you think. Whatever you choose the first one is an absolute nothing and the second much more energetic into the top G. Mm. 
much more in the minim than there is in that crotchet. Much more in this than there was in the first crotchet of that bar. I wouldn't make a meal of that bottom note either. You've got places to be, you know, there's not time to hang around down there, but this one... This one... And this. Let's do it again from the top, and we'll go on if we like it. One, two... things to look at. So from bar eight after the crotchet rest, you've had a nice long back bow at the top, so you're right at the tip, completely conveniently ready to carry on. I've moved back into half position there. That's just, again, you can make your own choice. You could stay in first and reach back. I've just decided, as I'm going to be there for a while, move back into half position. Going up here, good places to shift are semitones because they're just not very far to go. So I've got a one on the A and a one again on the B flat. Really convenient place to shift. One, two, four to get to the top. Once you've played the top note, move the bow onto the D string but don't take your four off until you need to shift back and play this. Don't, look, don't let's hear that ping off as soon as you've played it. It's such a nice note. You want the benefit of that resonance as your bow moves over here. Move your left hand last. Another good place to shift if there isn't a convenient semitone to go on is to shift onto a note that you wanted to, um, that would have naturally been weighted anyway. So it's risky shifting onto a note that's not very important, or a note that's on an offbeat, or a note that's on a weak beat. But it's quite useful to shift onto a note that's a significant thing anyway. So I would go 1-1 one, one again, this time it's a whole tone. 1 on the B natural. Now we could finish there. Take everything off, mighty leap back. Or we could be slightly more subtle about it. And finish there on a four. And then we'd have loads of fingers left to go on with. Shall we just do that, practicing the shifts? This is bar eight. After the crotchet rest, so we're in after two. We're going to be right at the tip because of what we've played before it. Bar eight. One, two. <laughs> once more and go on. Bar eight, after the rest. One, two. in 15. There. Because there will be a G major chord when we come to put the ground with it. So after that shift then, that works really quite nicely fingering wise, doesn't it? We're very nicely at the tip of the bow for the quavers. Open top string because we're going on. Just fits really 
well, doesn't it? Enjoy this to get you right back to the tip. too hard to make that C bloom and because it blooms you've got hours to get up to the top G. I like a four on that. You could go for the top string. There's something quite nice about having the whole of that C minor chord on different strings so an open G flat C but there's also further to go if you go for the top string instead of the second string so I, I tend to put a four on that. Nice long back bow. So in terms of direction, it just bows itself straight out, and I think you can really enjoy using plenty of bow, getting to one end or the other, staying there a bit, and then working your way back. Why don't we go from the last note of 16? That's the fourth finger, and it's a nice long back bow into the sunshine over here. I've moved round a bit because the sun is quite opposing over there. Yesterday morning it snowed, so you know, you can't win, can you really? This is the last minimum of 16, so we're in after two. Nice long back bow. One, two. There's a lot of places in there as well where little crotchets just can get thrown away. That was too much. Yeah, ones like that. In preparation for... Nothing on there. In preparation. Nothing on there. So there's lots. Shall we go on? This is 20 after the rest. One bowing thing to think about in there. This works really nicely. The repeat of it comes the other way around. You could tuck the end of 26 so we get nicely and then a tuck. For me that's too square, it's too intrusive. It's just not very subtle. I think it's fine to have this one. and just enjoy working your way back to the tip. I think that's fine. So I wouldn't make a correction at the end of 26. Let's play from 25. 25 after the rest. One, two. <laughs> I forgot to mention in there. I would use a fourth finger here, and then I'd use an open. 
open string. <laughs> position in 28. You could play that on the F string. First position and put the B flat up there. Your choice. I find that note just never quite as nice as that one. The half position B flat is always nicer, I think. I've taken the first opportunity to get back into first position, so I've moved for the E flat. And then here we are in first position which helps because we want the four on that. And here, this is 31, the button is a tiny. Once you've played the first quaver G on the F string, play the F, play the A on the F string as well. So one on the G, three on the A, one on the G. Let's go from 28 after the crotchet rest. 28. One, two. Now that feels backwards, doesn't it, in 31? And so does this. But this. in there it's too obtrusive so I would live with the fact that just a little bit in 31 and 32 is perhaps not the way around you might choose but then it's nice here Beethoven 5. Sorry, you'll never look at that in the same way again. So the bowing comes out nicely from 33. Fingering wise, we're going to bar that to the G across to the B natural. So I'd better retake and get over here. I don't think you need to, I think you can use whatever's left. Experiment with these. You could create all sorts of interesting shapes in there. What you can't do is play three equal crotches and then a minim that just stops. So whether you go to the middle crotchet, or whether you grow through all three of them, or whether you just make them a bit lifted, whatever, but just don't play them all equal. Bar this, and that's another of my added B naturals. Coming, that's 42. You need one, two, four, and the same here, and here. Whatever you do, make sure you've got a one on the G at the bottom. So the octave goes one to four. Here's a B natural. Oh, that's already in, actually, isn't it? Just from the beginning of the bar. Shall we go from 36? 36, here we go. And one.
let's play it through, shall we? I've recorded a ground, so we've got an accompaniment to play with. This is quite a steady version of the ground for starters, and instead of counting in, you get an introduction that you're going to hear the last four bars of the ground before we start. Here we go. So here is a slightly faster version, again you get the same four bar introduction.
the version just off the ground playing on its own so that you can play along. Have fun! Thank you.